Hi everybody, this is Jeff Archibald from Wright Training, here at the Victor Gym to take you through day five of our summer training session. Um, our warm up today is 15 swings, 10 sit ups, and 5 goblets. I'm going to give you a couple cues on the swings before we get going. Swings, it's a hinge movement, it's, and it's, it's, not a, it's, not a, it's not a squat, and it's definitely not want any back flexion. It's a hinge movement, it all comes from the hip, chest up. And you can pick up your implement, whatever you're using, you put it kind of where your heels are at and a nice deadlift pick up. It'll start with a nice little swing. And you're trying to get your arms go parallel to the floor. Nice hip snap. Another. All the power is coming from the hip snap. And you're thinking about driving, you can think of this as your belt, you're trying to drive that through to get that power. At the same time, I want to I want a glute squeeze because I want your spine to stop up vertical. I don't want your spine going back in extension at the top of the movement. So we're going to do 15 of those, 10 sit-ups, legs open, and you're just trying to keep your elbows past your knees. So you do one. Those will be your sit-ups. And goblet squat, the cues I want you to think about, you can have your feet a little bit wider than shoulder width. My feet naturally point out a little bit. You can have them straight or teeny bit uh, pointed out. And when, you're doing the gob when you're doing the goblet squat, you want that neutral spine. And you're trying to get down to 90 by keeping, but by keeping your spine neutral. I don't want any flexion or extension. So it should look like this. And you'll hold whatever you're going to use. You can use dumbbells, kettlebells, milk cartons, whatever you got at home right now. You'll hold it right against your chest to keep the weight off your lower back. And nice, slow control down and up. Slow control down. And the other cue that you want to be aware of when we're doing any squats as we move through stuff, just make sure that your knees are tracking over your feet and not cape. This is valgus. We don't want any of that. And when it, it's rare, but you, you can do too bow legged, but that's actually rare. So I just want to make sure that you're getting your knees tracking right over your feet. That way, you won't put any unneeded pressure on the medial side of your knee. So our first round of work is going to be it's going to be six rounds, six goblet squats. And it's going to be at a five second pause at the bottom. Last week we did a three second, so we're just adding some difficulty. And when you're at the bottom of your goblet, I want you to, you can put your phone or something down to look, to look at the time, or you can just give yourself a slow count. One, one thousand, two, one thousand. Because that five second block is longer than most people think. Then our next exercise on this block is going, I'm gonna, you can find a line anywhere, you can make it up imaginary. Put a piece of tape down, I'm going to use this crease right here. And it's a forward and back single leg hop. You can kind of think about, I'm going to try to travel a foot or 12 inches, but you just definitely want to be clearing that, your heel over that line for sure. Nice and stacked knee over your foot. Uh, that and a, a neutral back. Then you get your reps there, and then you're going to switch to your left, same thing. Okay, and after that, your stretch is going to be third world stretch. That's a nice sumo stance, a little bit wider than shoulder width apart, toes pointed out, and the key I'm going to turn sideways so you can see. On this guy, you're trying to, it's a, it's a mobility uh, drill more than anything, and it's really good for ankle mobility and hip mobility. You're trying to sink down as low as you can. If you start to feel some posterior tilt, it's called the butt wing, most people call it, this sucker tilt in, then you've gone too far. So I want you to be able to keep a neutral spine with a little curve in your back, as low as you can go. Mine's about right here. And then arms right inside both knees, and you can get a good adductor stretch as well. And we'll hold that for 20 seconds. And another uh, thing you can do for the third row stretch so you can work on getting that depth. You can start with some risers, like I, I could go over and grab two five pound weights or a two by four, and that'll help you get some of that range going. And <clears throat> once you feel like you can get where you want to be, you can pull those heel lifters out.
So our next block of work is going to be six rounds again. And we're going to start with 12 each kettlebell floor presses. And that'll be a one-arm kettlebell floor press, and I'll demonstrate that. Then we're going to move into eight Russian triangles, and then a wall stretch. Or that can be substitute for child's pose. So I'll, I'll show you how those work. We'll start with the floor press. I'll show you with a couple different implements as everyone's kind of working with the scaled down weight, weight crew. If you're going to use a dumbbell, I want you to put it right by your hip. Legs at 90. Both hands. And then pivot up onto your elbow. But I want your, you set the leg of your hands and it stays bent. The opposite leg goes straight. The opposite, this one goes down. Because the way we're going to lift this gives you some rotational torque. And this will let, be able to help you balance that. And when your elbow, I don't want, for this exercise, I don't want it right at your body. I definitely don't want it chicken, chicken armed out here. Let's call it about 45. And it'll look like this. And just a light tap with your elbow on the ground. And then when I was done with that set, I'll bring this arm back over and set it down. So for all you got people that just have a plate, this works pretty well. We just kind of tested it out. Same start, put it right by your hip, and I think this would work up to about a 15. Well, a 25 might be too heavy. Hold it like this, and then everything is identical. Elbow 45, nice embrace, nice tight core, and do your reps from there. And you're gonna do, each round is gonna be 12 on each side. So I would do 12 here, switch to my left, 12 on the other side, that would be one round. And then our next exercise is a Russian triangle, which we can do, you could do with kettlebell, plate, dumbbell, whatever you got. I'll demonstrate first with the plate. How I want you to start this, I want you to start holding the plate right over your chest. And then there's kind of two ways to do it. But I'm going to demonstrate the hardest way first, and that's with your heels off the ground through the whole movement. Your back behind your head, forward, nice little core tap, tap back to center, over your head. And on your way back up, you start where you left off on the last round. So now I go. And if that movement's too hard for you, plant your heels, and then it's the exact same movement. The other thing I want you to key in on this, when you do the tap, I want the core tight. There's a tendency when you get to this side to, go, to let your core go loose on the tap. So make sure you're keeping your core engaged in this whole movement. And I will show you a dumbbell variation of this. And for this one, we're going to hold it like a kayaker hold, so we're going to stack our hands on it. Press it on the hip. I'm going to keep my heels on the ground because it's actually pretty heavy for me. Right over the head. Both. I actually can't tap this one. And I think the most important thing on those rotations is nice tight core. There you go. So our stretch is going to be a wall lat stretch. If you have, I'll show you an alternative if, you, if you've got no wall space to do this. But this is, you're looking to get your, to draw, the ideal is to be able to draw a straight line from your arm all the way through your torso. Slight bend in the knee. And you can get a, and then start slowly pressuring down through your shoulders and you should get a good lat stretch. And to increase it a little bit more, you do ladder, just shift your pelvis from left to right. It's so now I'm feeling a like big stretch in my right arm. Now a big stretch in my left. That is our wall stretch. If you don't have a wall, just enjoy yourself a child's pose. Which is just like this.
Okay, we're going to end this session with a 45 second Jane on your side to start. And, the, and when, just to get in yourself a good position, we're going to take your high arm, bring it over, and rest just like you're chilling. That way it stacks your hips so they're not too far open, so we want the hips stacked. And the movements we're going to be using are 45 second Jane. And if you, uh, you can just get your phone or, or a clock and so you can time yourself. Each, each of the four movements, four movements will go for 45 seconds. We'll start with scissors and really focus on the range you can get out of it, not super fast oscillating ones. I want full range of scissors. So we do scissors for 45 seconds. Then we do knee to chest for 45 seconds. And then we bring it back to butt kickers for 45 seconds. And after the butt kickers for 45 seconds, we end with the circles. And you can kind of do it whichever way you like. I usually go, I usually go circles in one direction for half of the time. And then I'll switch it. You can even play with the size. You can go big circles, or you can do small circles. And so you'll go through all those movements. For 45 seconds, switch sides, do that again, and that's one round. <laughs>